In this series of video tutorials, we're going to be making ourselves a little game in Game Maker Studio called Brick Smash. When I press the play button, you'll see what we have to do in this game, and it's basically using this paddle at the bottom of the page. We move around using the left and right arrows, and our job is to hit the ball back up into the air and to try and knock away as many bricks as possible. Okay, so the red bricks are worth 10 points, yellow ones are worth 30 points, orange bricks are worth 50 points, and the stars at the top there are worth about 100 points. Okay, so the harder blocks to hit are worth a lot more points. You've got to try and avoid hitting those bombs at the top of the page, and you've also got to try and avoid missing the paddle. Ah, sorry, missing the ball at the bottom of the page too. If that ball gets past the paddle, which I'm going to show you now, you'll see these lives disappear. You've only got three lives to work with. Okay, so it is a bit of a challenge to try and knock all these blocks away before you lose those three lives. Okay, when you do win the game, a little message comes up telling you that you've won. When you run out of lives, you'll also get a message telling you that it's game over and it will just go back to the start and you can play it again. Okay, so hopefully you get the idea of how this game is working. It's just a one level game at the moment, but if you want to go ahead and add some other ideas into your game or some different levels, feel free, you're more than welcome. But I'll show you the basics of how to get started on this Brick Smash game. Okay, so to begin with today, you're going to need to go into Game Maker and click on the New tab. You want to be saving your project into your account somewhere. I'm saving in my documents and in the year 10 IPR folder. The name I'm going to give my project today is just Brick Smash. If you've got a better name for that game, feel free to give it a different name. And I want you to click Create. And Game Maker will just set up a few folders ready for you to make your game. This Compile Messages folder can be closed off. And I'll just make my screen full screen. Okay, before we start in Game Maker today, we do need to get these resources here, so the sprites and the sounds copied across into our account. So I'm just going to highlight these, right click on them and copy them. Or you can press Ctrl C for the shortcut. I'll go into my documents into my year 10 folder and I'll see the Brick Smash game folder just there. I will make a new folder called Resources and I'll just press Ctrl V to paste those resources into my Brick Smash folder. So ready to start making our game now, so let's pop on over to Game Maker and we'll start by loading in our sprites. So press the red Pac-Man button up the top there to bring up your sprite properties box and load in your first sprite. In the resources folder, the first sprite we want to bring in is the ball. Don't remove the background from it, it already has a transparent background so it's all good to go. Give it the name SPR underscore ball and click OK. Second sprite we're bringing in today is going to be this orange block. Okay, this time you can remove the background if you like. If you look closely it'll just chisel away the edges a little bit. So as you turn that tick on and off, it's up to you if you want square blocks or slightly rounded rectangle blocks. I'm going to go with the slightly rounded rectangle block. I'm going to give it the name SPR underscore orange and click OK. Now you might have noticed there was a few other colours in our game. We had yellow and red blocks as well. So what I'm going to do is just right click on this orange block and duplicate it. And I'm going to call this next one SPR Yellow. And I'm going to, instead of load a sprite, I'm going to go edit sprite. And I'm just going to edit this existing sprite by double clicking on it and choosing the fill bucket from my toolbar over here. And I'm going to pick the colour yellow and simply click in the middle of that block to change it to yellow. Hit the green tick at the top when you're done. On the next page hit the green tick and you've got yourself a new sprite which is a yellow one. You need to do that one more time so right click on the yellow sprite and duplicate it. This time the sprite's going to be SPR underscore red for its name and again instead of loading the sprite we're going to go down to edit sprite. We're going to double click on this picture using the fill bucket select the color red first of all and then click in the middle of that block to change it to red hit the green tick hit the green tick click OK alright so we've got our three different blocks there we've got one more block we need to bring in we might do that one now so just create one more sprite and this time we're going to load the sprite in again the other block we want to bring in is this star block okay, if you want to remove the background you can but I think I might leave the background on this just so that darker border stays around the block click on open, we'll give it the name SPR underscore star. 
So there's our four blocks brought in. We'll keep loading the other sprites in now. So we've got a bomb that we need to bring in. It's already transparent, so you don't need to remove its background. Just give it the name SPR underscore bomb. Next sprite, we've got the play button to begin our game. Don't remove the background, so leave everything unchecked. We'll give it the name SPR underscore play. Now, a lot of people, when they are making these sprites, feel lazy and they don't rename them. You must rename your sprites. I'm telling you that now that you will lose big marks in your assignments if you do not name your sprites and objects. Okay, so make sure you are giving these names as we go along. The next one is the little life sprite. Again, you don't need to remove the background. It's already missing, so that's good. We'll call it SPR underscore life. Just a few to go now. The next one is the title. Again, it's transparent already, so you don't need to remove the background. We'll call it SPR underscore title. And the last sprite we're bringing in is the wall. Okay. Again, don't remove the background. We're going to give it the name SPR underscore wall. And I want to edit this sprite. We've already used these black and grey colours on our wall in a previous tutorial, so let's change the colours a little bit. So click Edit Sprite and then double click on the wall. I'm going to scroll up on my mouse to zoom in a little bit here so we can see it a bit clearer. Using my fill bucket, I'm going to choose some shades of purple for this wall now. So I'm going to choose the really dark purple to begin with and click on the really dark part of the wall. And I'm going to go slightly lighter, and click on the outside sections, and then even a little bit more lighter, and click on the top section. And I'm left with something looking like that. When you're happy with your wall colors, hit the green tick, hit the green tick again, and click OK. Now we've got just one last sprite to make ourselves before we've finished bringing all our components for the game. So let's just click Pac-Man at the top one more time. And we're going to call this one SPR underscore paddle. This is going to be a little paddle that we use to hit the ball up into the air. And we're not going to load this in, we're actually going to make it ourselves. So click on Edit Sprite and go to File and New. Now the width you want for this paddle is 16, oh sorry not 16, 96 pixels and the height is going to be 16 pixels. So 96 width, 16 height, click OK, and you'll get a little grey strip looking like that. That's the size of our paddle. Now you want to give it a bit of colour, so just double click on that grey paddle and scroll up on your mouse to zoom in a little bit. What I want you to do is select your rectangle tool here and choose the second circle for your size there. Now I want you to go and left click your mouse on the yellow and right click your mouse on the green. So you've got two bright colours there. And starting in the top left hand corner, click and drag out to the bottom right hand corner. You've got to get this to fill that entire box up. There shouldn't be any grey spaces behind it. Once you've done that, we're going to put a bit of colour in the middle as well. So I'm going to left click on the blue and right click on the pink. There's some more bright colours there. And I'm going to attempt to drag out a rectangle that looks good. Yeah, that's reasonable. Okay, so that's going to be my paddle. Pretty bright and leery, but when you press the tick and press the tick, you see it's pretty small and you can't even notice all those colors anyway. So click on OK, and then you'll see your paddle in the library, and we've got all our sprites brought into our game now. So next step, as you should know by now, is to convert these sprites into objects. So let's start with the ball. We'll give it the name obj underscore ball and attach the ball sprite to it. Hitting the blue object button at the top again, we'll do the next one, which is obj orange and attach the orange block to it. It's going to be solid. All these blocks and walls today are going to be solid. So make sure you convert them to solid objects when you are making them. The next object is going to be object yellow and we're going to attach the yellow block to that object and turn it into a solid object. Okay, the next block is obj underscore red. Make it solid, click OK. Make the next object is going to be obj underscore star. Attach the star block to it, make it solid, click OK. Next thing we're going to do is the bomb, obj underscore bomb, attach the bomb sprite to it and click OK. It's no longer solid. obj underscore play for the next one, attach the play button to it and click OK. Again, it's not solid. 
Next one is the life, so OBJ underscore life. Select the life sprite, click OK. The next object is going to be OBJ underscore title. Change the sprite there um, and choose the title. Again, not solid. The next object we're making is the wall. So OBJ underscore wall. Now this wall that we bring in is going to be solid. So make sure you check the solid box for that one. And finally, the last object we're bringing in is the paddle. So OBJ underscore paddle. Attach the paddle sprite to it and it will be solid. So check the solid box. Click OK. So all those sprites now have been converted into objects. Again, make sure they've got those meaningful names. You will be marked down in assignments if you do not name your objects. One more object we're going to make now is the empty object for the score. So just hit that blue ball one more time, obj underscore score, and it's got no sprite attached to it. We're going to draw the scoreboard in ourselves, so just click on OK. We'll come back and edit that scoreboard up a bit later. We've got two sounds we want to bring into this game, so hit the grey speaker at the top and we'll load the sounds in now. First sound we want to bring in is the hit sound. So give it the name SND underscore hit. That just means when the ball hits the wall or hits the paddle, it's going to play a little sound. You can press the green play button if you want to have a preview of it. And we'll bring in that sound. What was the other one? It was the lose sound. So when the ball either hits a bomb or goes out of the screen, we'll play the sound as if you have lost a life. Click OK. Okay, so all the sprites are in, sounds are in, objects are in. I guess that means it's time to start making our level up. So let's create a room by pressing that white button with the blue border at the top. We'll make it up to full screen. Click on the settings tab first of all and give it the name level 1. The width for this room, we're going to make it about 640. And the height, let's try 578 can be adjusted a little bit later if we need to. I think 578 should work for us. Background today, I haven't got a special background. If you want to go online and find yourself a cool background, by all means go for it. But I'm just going to pick a solid color today and I'm just going to go maybe this black color. I think we've got a lot of bright colors in our game, so black should contrast well with them and really make them stand out. Uh, once we've got our background in, we can pop on over to our objects and start making our first level. Okay, If you click in this box here, we might as well start with the wall that surrounds our game. So by holding shift and control at the same time, you can click and drag and put a border around three sides of your game. You don't need it at the bottom, Okay, but the left, top and right sides of your game need a wall. Looking in our sprites here next, we might put some bombs up the top here, so one there and maybe one there. I'll delete that, let's put them next to each other actually. Below the bombs we're going to do the stars, so I'm going to come in two blocks and just hold control and shift and run those stars across there. I'll grab the orange blocks next and run them in. The yellow ones can come in. And finally the red ones can come in. So these are the blocks that we have to knock away. Um, we're going to put the paddle in next. So let's grab the paddle. We don't want to put it right at the bottom because that's where our score panel is going to go. So we'll go up one and maybe put the paddle in the second last row. Straight above the paddle you want to put the ball in. And what else have we got? We might put the score panel in just in this very last row down here in the black box. I think that's about everything we can put in it for the minute. Okay, so that's our first level. If you turn the grid off at the top there, you can get a better idea better idea of how that's going to look. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to press the green tick at the top there. And that's our first level made up. What we want to do before that first level is put in a splash screen that tells us about the name of the game. So let's make up one more room here. We'll make it full screen and get it the same size, so 640 by 578. We'll give it the name Splash, this is our splash screen. Uh, going across to our backgrounds, we'll pick the same black background colour. And in our objects, we haven't got too much to put in. We're just going to put in the title, first of all, at the top. So let's find a good spot for that. 
Um, some other objects we've got the play button. Where's that one? I'm going to put that down near the bottom, about there, and that gives us a bit of room to just fill up with um, other objects from our game. So I might put a wall around the outside of this room, and then I might put some of the blocks in. So I'll put in the stars first of all. The orange, then the yellow, and the red. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. That play button is a little bit low down, so I might just delete it and move it up a little bit. Even to actually about there looks good. So turning the grid off, that looks like a pretty good splash screen. Okay, not perfect, but I think it looks alright. So we can hit the um, green tick on top of that and what we want to do now is move this splash screen above level 1. So just pick it up and drag it above level 1. So splash screen will play first, then level 1, which is the game, will start playing. Alrighty, so I think we're all good now. We've got our room set up, got our objects sorted, sounds are in, sprites are in. We are ready now to start coding our game. So I'm going to stop the video here. This is just the first part. In the second part of our tutorial, you'll see a lot of the coding take place. Alright, so I'll see you in part two.